is rational barrier. Today I'm going to talk about electrical distance. And before we uh, start talking about, so I'm going to uh, show you a simulation. Now uh, let's simulation. Now uh, let's see. Um, in this simulation, let's first start. Um, I start adding one coulomb. So yeah, uh, each of these particles have one coulomb charge. You can see they are pushing on each other. Uh, they are pushing on each other. Now let's add two coulombs, and you should be able to realize that they are really, really bigger fields being generated. A greater electric field distance. Now we have three coulombs charge. They are really pushing on each other. You might have figured out that we added positive charges because the field are moving away from each other. Five coulomb charges. They are really applying a force on each other. So we can measure the electric field strength and we usually represent that using arrows. And so this object has no charge, but if I add positive charge, the electric field moving out from this positive charge. If I remove the charge, what happened? If I remove the charge, then I remove the electric field. What is going to happen if I add a negative charge? Well, we are going to have the same size arrow, but now they are pointing to uh, pointing to what? If I remove the charge, what happens? Be, uh, this video is about electric field distance, and so I am going to add one more charge. And these are longer arrows, but now let me add one more charge, and what happens? Uh, the arrows increase and electric field is strengthened and if I add even more charge again we are increasing the electric field is and it is going to be large and um, just increase the size of this so instead um, well, we add more charges we just add more arrows this will be important when we are looking at for example two charges placed and so we could represent the electric field is strength as arrows uh, and as we add charges, we are increasing the number of those arrows. And so there is a direct relationship between the charge of those plates and electric field distance. Direct relationship. Now, it is not always perpendicular, but we just going to assume that this relationship is perpendicular and line are infinitely long. And that is the relationship between the amount of charge and the electric field. That's what we're going to keep in mind. And now let's play with another simulation. Now, I'm going to add uh, charges and let's see what effects that charge have on the electric field. Uh, and I am just going to place the charge right here, right here. Um, it is uh, it is a simulation. I would encourage you to play. Go to the uh, Colorado University and um, and play with the simulation at home. So watch what happens when I add a positive charge in the middle. We have uh, generated an electric field, and as I increase the amount of charge. What what uh, electric field it is increasing? There is a direct relationship between the two. As I pull those charges out, you can see that uh, that electric field strength is going to zero. All right. Uh, what happens if we put a negative charge in the middle? The electric field, but those field lines are pointing toward the charges, and I increase. Uh, increase uh, the number of charges I am increasing the electric field distance as I get rid of them then the electric field is going away but the neat thing about this simulation is you can make it quantitative as I going to add a charge in the middle then uh, I'm going to turn the numbers so you can see uh, uh, see that um, see that each of these are measuring around seven volt per meter watch what happens as I add charges in the middle now they are measuring around 14 volt per meter and now let's add one more it is going to be around 2 to 1 volt per meter so there is a direct relationship between the amount of charge and electric field